All right, so welcome back. Let's look at an example here, applying these inference ideas to regression. So using that data set we've seen before of all these, these baseball games, right? using time of game as our, our response, and we've, we decided that pitchers was our best explanatory variable. All right, so I'm going to be doing this stuff in Minitab. Minitab has some pretty good regression tools. So we've seen before how to kind of do our preliminary examination. Are things linear? What's our regression equation? All that kind of stuff. All right, so now we're going to get into the more advanced, actually fitting a model here in Minitab. All right, so for more advanced regression stuff, we go to stat, regression, regression, fit regression model. Now our response has been time of game. Our predictor has been pitcher. So up until now, our, our default our default options have been fine for output. All right, but Minitab has a nice option that I want to click here. It gives us this nice option of a four in one plot. Okay, so I think this is pretty nice. So we'll see what that gives us. All right, so let's click OK. Let's see our results. So our mini tab output. So our mini tab output gives us a whole bunch of stuff. All right, it gives us our equation. It gives us up here what's it, what's called our coefficients. All right, so the constant term that's your that's your intercept, where it says pitchers. Remember, pitchers was our x variable, our predictor. That's actually, this row has to do with your slope. All right, we got a model summary. S, we've seen that. That's our regression standard error. We've got R squared. We also have this ANOVA table. All right, we have unusual observations here as well. All right, now, we've seen this scatter plot before. Looked linear. Looked pretty good. There wasn't any concern there. All right, so what do these plots look like this four and one plot that I was talking about All right, let's make it a little bigger here All right, this four and one plot remember the first step of regression is we gotta check our assumptions okay so we've got so remember one of the assumptions is we need normality of residuals so here's a normal plot of our residuals looks pretty good All right, the histogram looks fairly symmetric Okay, and our residual plot here looks pretty good as well. All right, we don't see any sort of systematic deviation from the mean. So this 4 and 1 plot is nice because it kind of gives us everything in one place. Right, the rest of our output, okay, this is all this stuff is useful to us. Now what we're going to focus on in our output are these things. All right, I've circled here what we need from the output. Okay, S, we're going to focus on our slope, inference for our slope, and using our regression equation. Now we can also have Minitab print out all of the residuals if we want, rather than just the concerning outcomes like it did over here. Okay, so let's do a test for significance of the slope. Yeah, we found a slope. Is it significant? If we're trying to show that it's significant, we have to assume it's not from the beginning, and we typically run a two-tailed test. All right, so our test statistic, we had we had 42 games played over this period of time. All right, so n was 42. Minitab calculated s as this 17.35. All right, again, I, I probably wouldn't recommend calculating s yourself, but if you wanted to, you could have you could have the computer here print out all of your residuals right, and do it that way. So again here's S. Now I would recommend just letting the computer calculate S but if you wanted to remember it's calculated from the residuals. So in a previous slide we saw you can have Minitab print all these residuals out for you. Right? You can have it print them all out for you and you could calculate S on your own just to confirm if you wanted. All right, so next step. We've got n, we got s, we got our standard error. From there, we can calculate our test statistic. 
we find a t-test statistic of 7.85 degrees of freedom. N was 42, so 40 degrees of freedom. All right, so you could go to your table with that test statistic for this p-value, but we know that's a big p-value, right? 7.85, or sorry, that's a bit really big test statistic, so it's going to give us a really small p-value. All right, our p-value we could estimate being very small. Now, many tabs should give us, should agree with us on this test statistic. Right? Many tab tells us our test statistic is 7.85 and our p-value is really, really small. Okay, great. So what about a confidence interval? Now, this is one thing many tab doesn't give us. So what if I want a 95% confidence interval for the slope? The degrees of freedom is this. I could find my t critical value, plug in to my equation, and calculate an interval there. So how do I interpret that? Just like any confidence interval, I'm 95% confident that the actual slope was captured here. All right, another thing we want to another thing we want to understand is where does this ANOVA table come from? Okay, so again, Minitab gave us the ANOVA table, but we want to kind of simplify that. We want to see if what we get matches up. All right, so calculating these these sum of squares can be quite involved. So really, I think what what we want to focus on is a situation like where maybe you're given some of these pieces of the table and have to fill out the rest of it. Specifically, if you're given two of these sum of squares and you're given n, you should be able to figure everything out from there. All right, so say we gave you these pieces, these sum of squares pieces, and we want to fill out the rest of the table. All right, so I'm going to bring that up in Excel and we're going to fill out our table. So n, remember, was 42. So our total degrees of freedom, so let's, let's write that down. n is 42. So our total degrees of freedom is going to be 42 minus 1, or 41. All right. Now we're doing simple linear regression. Okay, so we're estimating two parameters. So 2 minus 1, our model degrees of freedom for simple linear regression, always going to be 1. Right, remember, these need to add up. So 41 minus 1 is 40, or n minus 2, our error degrees of freedom. To find our sum of squares error, I would just take the total minus model. So let's pop our data over into Excel so we can kind of manipulate this table. Now, once we've had these couple pieces, the sum of square, there's not really much other super crazy calculation. So let's pop our data over into Excel. Now, I already have these sum of squares pieces, so there's not a whole lot else I need. I need my total n. Right? And I also know that I'm doing simple linear regression. So our n was 42. In simple linear regression, right, remember we are estimating two parameters, your intercept and your slope. So your model degrees of freedom is always 2 minus 1, or 1 for simple linear regression. My total degrees of freedom, n minus 1, 42 minus 1, or 41. My model and error terms always need to add up to the total. Right, so 1 plus 40 is 41. Right, you might notice 40 is n minus 2. Right, that's our error degrees of freedom for simple linear regression. Right, model and error always need to add up. So if I take the total minus the model, this should leave me with my so if I take total minus the model, and that should leave me with my error sum of squares. Okay, to find my mean squared, that's simply my sum of squares divided by your degrees of freedom. All right, so 12,039 divided by 40. I can do the same thing here. That gives me this. 
My F test statistic is the ratio of your mean squared model to mean squared error. All right, so there's my F test statistic, 61.68. All right, let's see if that matches up with what Minitab gave us. And yes, 61.68. Okay, so Minitab is telling us a very small p-value, and that makes sense. This is a, a this is a large test statistic. But now let's go to our F table with our ANOVA table. All right, so our ANOVA table, we found our test statistic, and here's our F table. Now different F tables are set up differently, right? but they all should essentially have the same thing. And when I'm, remember, when I'm working with the F distribution, there are two degrees of freedom, your numerator, a model, your denominator, or your error. All right, so my, so here, my model degrees of freedom is one, so since my model or my numerator degrees of freedom is one, I'm going to be working in this column. All right, so I just have to find my denominator degrees of freedom of 40. I'm going to have to scroll way down here for 40. All right, so here is 40. All right, remember, numerator degrees of freedom one, simple linear regression, and my model degrees of freedom is 40. So, notice what your F table gives you. It gives you the area to the right. Okay, so my F test statistic was 61.68. This is telling me the area to the right of 12.61 with our associated degrees of freedom is 0 0.001. So our p-value is something really, really small, less than 0 0.001. If I want to find something exact, right, I can go to Excel and use this F.dist. All right, so I wanted, we wanted 61.6795. My degrees of freedom one is one. That's your numerator first. Degrees of freedom two, that's your denominator second. We always want cumulative. All right, that pops up a one. Now remember in Excel, so remember what most F tables give you, the area to the right. Excel, when you use a something.dist function, it gives you the area to the left. So really what we want when we're dealing with F distribution is 1 minus F dist. That gives us 0 .00000 something really small. All right, so you ought to be able to make that ANOVA table, given a couple pieces of it, you ought to be able to make this ANOVA table match up with whatever your regression equation, um, whatever your software might output. Okay, so it's a very small p-value here. It means we have a significant model. All right, so hope that example was helpful. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.